Hi, hi everybody. Hi, thank you for joining us today. I hope everybody is, is healthy, everybody is fine. Thank you again for joining us. We can, we can, today our session can be viewed on the Habitat Foundation's YouTube and also the Habitat Foundation's Facebook. Okay, so uh, I hope everyone is okay with the MCO that's happening now and in some places you're only having CMCO and if you miss if you miss the outdoors so today we are bringing some component of the outdoors to you okay so today with us we have Dr Ain Hi Dr Ain how are you Hi I'm fine thank you Hi okay. everyone Dr Ain I've long Dr Ain for quite some time uh, she's a faculty member in the School of Biological Sciences, USM, Penang. She studied small vertebrates, including bats, since year 2000. Oh, that's, oh, that's 21 years ago. Okay. Her doctoral, her doctoral study at Texas Tech University was related to bats' reproductive ecology. And currently, she's focusing more on resource partitioning among tropical bats. Discoveries from the study help to highlight bats contribution in the ecosystem okay she also involved in long-term bats monitoring programs conducted by southeast asian bat conservation and research union besides outreach activities at the at the national level under malaysian bat conservation and research unit mbcru okay dr ain before we go further i have a question for you yes from all the animals that we have okay from all the big, biggest animal in the ocean, big animal in the forest, to the smallest animals that we have in our forest. Why bats? Why? <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, thank you, Dr. Ahmad, for a very warm uh, introduction. Okay, um, hi, everyone. Assalamualaikum. Um, I have two answers. Okay, for the short answer, actually, I am falling in love with bats. <laughs> Uh, long answer is actually I'm amazed about their ability to see in the dark. That is the first thing that amazed me. And then uh, I realized whenever uh, I read more and I explore more, uh, I realized that there is some more things that we're not sure or we don't know uh, about bats. Okay, until nowadays, uh, there is a lot of uh, discoveries uh, reported uh, worldwide is actually in like either in a taxonomic review or even in um, the response of uh, the bats to anthropogenic uh, activities uh, physiology and so on so many more so that's that's the thing that i'm uh, get interested to learn more about bats yeah okay okay thank you so okay let's start okay uh some people out there okay uh they're not sure they i've got questions okay bats are they really are they related to rats are they flying birds uh, are they flying rats are they really more related to to birds so can you can you start your our session today by explaining on that okay uh, all right so by that uh, let me share uh, the slide first okay um i'm sharing my slide I'm not seeing your your slide yet. Okay. So, okay. okay. You able to I see, see uh, my slide? Okay, I see Nadal. <laughs> okay. All right. Yeah, Nadal and whatsoever, all these kind of public figure. I'm pretty sure that uh, most of you uh, know them, even for Siti Nohaliza or uh, Yang uh, Duli Yamaha Mulia uh, Sri Agung. So this is an example for public figure, right? Okay. Huh. Basically, if you are interested to any kind of a public figure, of course, you need to know more about them. You are going to uh, learn about, uh, to try to look at their uh, background, try to find information about, um, yeah, like their biodata, for example. Um, and again, the same thing, uh, 
to know, to getting to know your public figure, you need to know their background, maybe their favorite drinks, or maybe their hobby and so on. It's a lot. And same goes to bats. So if you want to love or you want to uh, know more about bats, you need to get more information about bats. The backgrounds, their favorite food, their, um, their home range, uh, their reproduction and so on. Okay, so bear with me. Uh, like Dr. Ahmad said, uh, he asked me about whether bats is actually birds or flying rats. Okay, I'm showing you this slide. Bat is actually come from um, order Chiroptera, hand wing. Terra re referring to the wing. So if you have a look on here, so it's actually the thin skin membrane in between their elongated fingers. Okay. So what is a bat actually? So compare bats with the birds. Okay. If you look here on your hand, so your thumb is the, the first fingers. Same thing with the bats. And then your second, third, until fifth elongated fingers. And in between the elongated fingers, there is a skin membrane. Okay. Whereas for the birds, so they have a homologous structure, but they have a different thing. They have a feather on uh, their what? Their radius and ulna here. Okay. So that is a difference between uh, bats and birds. Meanwhile, for uh, bats and flying rats, bats and flying rats, rats actually come from different order, not the same with uh, bats. Bats order Chiroptera and rats is actually come from order Rodentia. And of course, their uh, teeth arrangement is different with the bats. And it's really obvious, it's totally not flying rats, it's the bats. Rat is rat, bat is bat. Okay? All right. So, uh, the other thing is, um, rat, uh, bats is also mammals, same like us, human, and also other uh, big vertebrates, other, other kind of wildlife, because they also have a body fur, they have hairs, and they also warm-blooded animals. Uh, bats also giving birds, they not lay eggs, okay? So they, lay, they give birth same like us as human and maybe your cats, dogs, your pets, okay? Because they uh, nurse their young uh, with the milk. So as you can see here, this is the mammary gland. This is full mammary gland. So they will, uh, the young or the pup will uh, get the milk from here, get the nutrient from uh, the mom. And uh, bats actually active at night. So same goes to other uh, nocturnal animals, the uh, other animals. The unique uh, criteria for bats is actually they able to fly. Compared to, okay, I just simply give the example, holubo or we can call it as a flying lima or kubong. So they move from tree to another tree by gliding. Whereas for bats, they able to flap their wing and fly and of course whenever they fly they're able to move a farther distance compared to the gliders all right um what else here okay, okay uh hold on so you mentioned that uh the bats are active at night right so how yes. do they actually can how do they move how can they see at night can you please okay. explain on that the time all right, so uh, the way they move actually uh, by echolocation. Okay, but before we learn more about the echolocation, uh, I would like to bring you to see, I mean like in close-up uh, photo, looking at the diversity of external appearance about uh, several species of bats. Okay, so here you can see, you know, the front face, the face of the bats, they have a unique characteristic for each of them. Some of them, they have a certain uh, structure like here, like a button in here. And then uh, they also have a, a simple, uh, sorry, simple uh, nose leaf. Or maybe they have an external, uh, ex, uh, external structure in front of their nose. Okay. So if you look, have a look on this, different species have different uh, face. And then this is... Uh, photo of uh, diversity of ears, 
for bats. So you can see some of the bats, they have uh, the ear like, uh, you can say, uh, like a Mickey Mouse ear, this one. Or simple ears like this. And some of the species, they have a really broad ears. And some, they have the elongated and maybe bigger than their head. Okay, so it depends on the species. And all this kind of characteristic is related to uh, the way they receive information from the sounding, uh, the surrounding, which is mean they do, they uh, uh, produce a sound. The bounce backs of the sound, but we call it as an echolocate, they, they're able to echolocate. So the information uh, from the sound itself that uh, can be captured from uh, their ears and processing uh, in their brain and then can give some clue or some idea on how uh, about their surrounding. Okay. So talking about the echolocation, actually not only bats that are able to do this kind of uh, ability. Uh, we have dolphin, we have uh, swiftlet that also produce uh, this kind of uh, mechanism. Uh, the difference is the wavelength. The wavelength is different. So if you can see here, this is only uh, the range of our uh, ability to hear, to hear the sound. Okay. So above this, we're not able to listen directly. We need to have a certain device to help us to listen the sound that produced by certain animal. Okay. All right. So uh, again, this is uh, related to the way they produce the sound. Actually, for the bats, they produce the sound from their larynx. They emit the sound is actually from their mouth or from their nose. nose. That's why some of the species, they have a very unique uh, structure in front of their nose. Okay. And whenever they receive the bounce uh, sound wave from certain object, so the ears will capture that kind of a wavelength and then process. So by having that, the best able to detect or they able to classify and also they able to um, localize uh, the distance. They able to estimate the distance. It's either uh, there is a real food or their prey, or maybe they need to avoid certain barrier. Okay. So by having this kind of mechanism, uh, it's allow them to fly or to move in the dark. That's why uh, for bats they see by listening, not uh, by eyes. Okay, I will show you later on uh, uh, different types of, uh, not different, uh, dif uh, two uh, bigger groups that uh, differ by this kind of uh, ability. Most of the insectivorous bats, uh, bats that uh, eat the insects, have this kind of uh, ability. They, they echolocate uh, to make sure that they're able to forage, they're able to move from one place to another place at night. It's totally dark, no light at all. However, fruit bats also have this kind of ability, but just uh, for the time being restricted to only one group of bats. Okay, we call it as a rosetus uh, fruit bats. So this is the example. However, for fruit bats, they didn't produce from the larynx. They didn't use that, but they uh, produce sound by clicking their tongue. Okay, like something like that. Okay, so uh, that is a uh, difference between uh, uh, the real bats that do the echolocation compared to the bats that just only making sound from different things. There is also bats that uh, produce sound by um, from their wing, the beat of their wing when they are flapping. Okay. All right. Um, what else should I say in here? Uh, okay. Uh, I think that's thank all. You. Okay, thank you, Dr. Ain. Okay. Uh, before I before we proceed further, uh, yes. we, uh, I have a quiz for our viewers. Okay. All right. We want to okay. okay. We want to do some. We want we want them to answer some questions. Okay. Uh, to see how much do they understand about bats. Okay. All right. Uh, can you all? Okay. Uh, my Ethan, can you please so. 
Let's all go. We get our viewers to go to kahoot.it. K A H O O T dot I T. And pin in the pin number. Okay. Uh, the number will be written in the comment in the comment section. You can see that. Okay. And then I'll I'll give you uh, two minutes uh, to join the quiz. Okay. Okay. Uh, okay. While while they are doing while they are answering those questions. Okay. okay. Please 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 go to uh, let let our viewers go there and and answer those questions. Only ten questions. Ten simple questions. Just to see how much do you know about bats. Okay. Before that, so Dr. Aim. Yes. What's your your best memory uh, with bats? Uh, okay. Experience related to bats. Oh, it's a lot, but one of them, um, I'm able to witness, I'm able to see uh, the way uh, the female, the mom, delivered their baby. It's really, uh, ever special, uh, what, the touching moment for me uh, during <laughs> that, that time. Yes. That's your, that's your best memory. Yes. <laughs> I thought, uh, no, okay. My best memory, memory with bats, I would say, in Mulu, I think, mm. in Mulu National Park, when the the millions of bats coming out from the Gua Nasi Bagus, I think, if I'm, okay. uh, I can't really recall the, uh, yeah, seeing them just a swarm. I don't know how how, how do you how do you call bats a group when the bats of, emerged from from the from the the cave yeah yeah yeah, yeah. when they yeah. came up from the cave just uh -huh. i don't know how many millions of them just just coming in and flying together just like a, i don't know just for well, that that's that's amazing yeah because some of them they make a certain pattern they just whirling around before they go to search the the, the food yeah thank you Jaime. ah that's uh, the deer cave in mulu yep yeah, I, yes. I, I observe that. Uh, me, me, myself personally, not, not still you not able been, to have oh, the never been to, to go Mulu to. Yet. Yeah. Oh, okay. Well, soon, soon. Yeah, okay. Uh, have people been answering the questions in. I think let, let's give them a few more minutes, one or two more minutes to. Yeah, it's okay. They, they try yeah, to answer. I think I think I can start game now. Okay, let's see. Let's see how much do you know about bats? <laughs> Just answer them. Just quickly answer. Uh, Jaime cannot answer. <laughs> <laughs> Christine, Christine also not allowed to answer. <laughs> yeah. Hi Andrew. Okay, let's see how much you know. How many bat species in the world? Uh, the questions are actually related to the to to the talk today. So we just want to see before before I I give a talk today. So we we, we just want to find out how much do you really know about bats? Okay. I okay, can and then we can also see okay. Uh, now, who who knows more about bats now, b even before even before listening to this talk? Okay, true or false? They are vampire bats in Malaysia. Uh. Okay. What do you think? Do we have any vampire bats? Okay. Okay, some people uh, okay, some people think that we have vampire bats. Okay, next question. Flying foxes are bats too. Huh. This is a little bit tricky. They're fox, they're not bats. What do you think? Are they bats? Or are they fox?
Okay, Jojo thinks that false. Answer them in the Kahoot link, Jojo. Okay. True or false? Bad rules can be found in the city. Huh. Can bad rules can be found in the city? True or false? What do you think? Are they found in Georgetown or in Petaling Jaya, in Kuala Lumpur? Okay, next question. Okay, Missy is in tip on the top. Bats are blind. Oh, are they blind? If you listen carefully earlier, I did mention this earlier about this. What do you think? Well, there's a saying that blind is a bat. Is Penang even considered a city? Yes, Penang is a, is a city. Okay, bat helps in pollinating the flowers of many fruit trees. True or false? Do they help pollinating flowers of many fruit trees? Okay, keep the answers coming. Okay, bats are rats that fly. Okay, this is very easy. <laughs> yeah. Justin, we have another question for the prizes. So we're going to conduct this another, a different quiz again in the towards the end. And for that, we will have prizes. Okay, we have special prizes later. So still stay to the end and participate in the quiz. So we will select uh, winners, lucky winners. We'll get something, we'll get some souvenirs from the Habitat Foundation and also from Dr. Ayn herself. Okay, another question. They are insect eating bats in Penang. Are they? Hmm, I'm not sure. Are they insects eating bats in Penang? What do you think? What do you think? Tak tahu. No problem. Uh, Dr. Ayn will be talking more about this. Okay. Bats are known to spread COVID-19 to human. Alamak. Is that true? Is that true bats are known to spread COVID-19 to human? Hmm, I wonder if they are if they do then it'll be very dangerous for us, isn't it? Missy seems to know quite a lot about bats, huh? Missy? Okay, some bad give some bad species give birth to twin. Oh, really? Is that true? 
Dr. Ain will be explaining her answers later, I guess. On this, Dr. Ain? Yes. We'll be sharing your answer, right? Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay, so that's that's the the end of the of the quiz. Okay, thank you for those participating. So let's continue with our talk. Uh, thank you, Ethan. So okay, uh, Doctor Ain, come back to your yes. presentation today. Uh huh. Just earlier, you showed a lot of photos with different structures of faces, art, ear shapes, and all, right? So that yes. shows that there are different types, different species of these bats. So how many bats do we have? really in the world and and how many do we have in malaysia or in penang okay all right um that is uh the most uh question that being asked not even among the publics but even uh, among the bad researcher as well because uh nowadays we have a very good and sophisticated equipment to do uh, another taxonomic revision to actually to finalize how many bat species that we have so far all right um, so talking about the bat diversity uh, actually we have more than 1420 species bats worldwide and we can it we can find it everywhere except in the north and also the south pole and also some a uh, few isol uh, isolated uh, oceanic island so the rest, there's bats, bats everywhere. Okay, all right. So talking about the bats diversity, of course, uh, there is a various types of uh, food that they eat. Uh, for this topic, I mean, for this talk, I just want to highlight about four uh, usual uh, feeding types, feeding ecology related with the bats. So there is also bats that uh, eat fruits or drink nectar, uh, bats that eat the insects. Uh, there is also bats that become a uh, predator to another small vertebrates. For example, some of bats, they, they eat the fish, as you can see here. All right, so this is not flying rats. This is bats eating the rats, <laughs> okay? Uh, and also there are also bats that Licking the blood. They're not sucking the blood, but they just only licking the blood. This is example of the frugivorous bats. Uh, some of them drink uh, the nectar from the uh, fruiting uh, flowers. Uh, eat uh, the fruits, and this is how they they uh, disperse the seeds. They also. Uh, bats that eat the insects. So as a photo shown here, this is a, I mean like I consider it's like a big insects, but they also um, forage or predated the small size of insects, even like one, two, three millimeter size of insects. Uh, about bats, this is other types of uh, questions that people really like to ask whether the bats is actually, uh, I mean, like in Malaysia, we have a vampire bats, okay? So out of 1,420 species worldwide, there's only three species that licking the blood. And that is only can be found in Central America and also South America, which is ranging from Mexico to Brazil, Chile, Uruguay, and also Argentina. So that's then, it. That then is then the, the afraid, distribution we of don't the need to be afraid then. Sorry? We don't need to be afraid of the Yes, the, of course. The you don't have to be afraid of the, the bats bat. that are uh, licking your blood. No. Okay, so there's only three species, common vampire bats, white wing vampire bats, and also hairy leg vampire bats. And then the blood, actually they, they, they lick the blood from the horses or other kind of uh, livestock. The birds uh, and also other wild animals. Okay, all right. Not so, from, basically, not from human, right? Ah, uh, no. 
Yeah, good to so know. basically, uh, <laughs> this is a kind of uh, types of food that's eaten by the bats. It depends on uh, uh, location, depends on their behavior, depends on um, the way they 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 uh, forage for the food. Because some of the bats is just like a seed and waiting predator. Some of the bats they just prefer to fly and navigate uh, and then catch the prey while they fly. So it depends. All right, so in Malaysia, we only record two major groups of bats. Bats that eating the fruits or drink the nectar, and also the bats that eat the insects. So uh, I'm simply uh, showing you these two different photo of bat species. So this is on your left, this is uh, the fruit bats. This is uh, the insect bats on your uh, right side. Okay, so the obvious uh, characteristic, look at the eyes. So for insectivorous bats, since they uh, produce sounds, they do the echolocation, they uh, don't use the eyes very much. So they still have the eyes, but not like really functioning for their movement. So they produce the sound from, for this species, they produce the sound and then emit the sound from the nose leaf. So that's why they have a very unique structure of the nose leaf. Okay. Uh, and then they have a bigger ears because they need to capture all the uh, sounds that bounce back to them. Compared to the fruit bats, they depend on the, uh, the visual and also they depend on the smell of the fruits. Okay, so that's why they only have a small and simple ears compared to the insect eating bats. And they have a bigger ears compared to the insect eating bats and simple nose. Okay, so I think this is uh, the easiest way to differentiate between uh, fruit eating bats and also insects eating bats. All right, so talking about Malaysia, currently we have 138 species of bats in Malaysia. For Peninsula itself, we recorded so far uh, 110 species. Uh, meanwhile, for Sabah, we recorded uh, about 88 species. And for Sarawak, we have uh, so far, we document about 77 species. Okay, so uh, bear in mind, the number keep on increasing because some of uh, the, 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 the work uh, related to taxonomic review, uh, this kind of, um, uh, what we call it as a, like a number or statistic keep on uh, changing. So the good thing is you can uh, refer to the link that I give to you on the bottom part of this slide. So that is, uh, they or, or always updated uh, the current uh, number of species of bats. Uh, worldwide or even in specific area, uh, not specific area, um, specific country. Okay, and I believe for us, I mean like for Malaysia, we keep on increasing the number of species because it's a lot of uh, discoveries uh, still under review, uh, but will be uh, documented or published soon. Okay, all right, so now, Bats diversity in Penang. So currently, uh, this is a uh, number of bats since uh, year 2000. So since uh, back to, to 20 years ago. So this is based on the recorded uh, data. So currently we have 45 species and mainland recorded about 40 species of bats, including food eating bats and also insects eating bats. Uh, the island itself so far, we recorded 25 species, all right? So uh, this is uh, on, on your what? On your uh, right side or whatever. So the species, uh, the example of species that we caught, we recorded so far. This is a group of bats that we call or we categorize as a round list horseshoe bats. We call it a round list horseshoe bats because if you look at their uh, face in front, their nose leaf look like a horseshoe. This one. 
and of course different structure different uh, appearance uh, have a characteristic for each species so we also have a uh, sheep tail bats okay uh, we have uh, these two species. This one can be found in urban area. Okay, let I move to the uh, slide, uh, the previous slide. Uh, just now, that is uh, uh, the, the just now the horseshoe bats. Uh, most of them are captured in the forest area. Meanwhile, for the she's tail bats, uh, we caught it in the urban area in the city. Um, and then the horseshoe bats. So this is a different types of horseshoe bats. This is uh, also captured uh, in between, not like really in the forest, but uh, in between forest and also uh, the city, the urban area. You can simply say that about the forest edge. Okay, all right, so this is, uh, yeah, this is uh, the, the group of bats that I mentioned before. Most of the round leaves horseshoe bat can be found in the forest, in Penang. And then this one, these two species can be found in uh, urban area, usually can be found in the urban area. Uh, for the horseshoe bats in the forest edge. For the evening bats, uh, it can be found in the forest. And uh, the bottom parts, the four different types of species, that is uh, the fruit bats that uh, uh, can be captured in uh, specifically in Penang Botetinka Garden and also uh, in Penang Hill. So, uh, of course, it's uh, based on different elevation. But uh, this is all uh, bats that uh being captured or being uh, studied in Penang so far and uh i believe there is a uh, more species can be discovered after this so stay tuned maybe we can increase the number of species later on okay um so that is all about the bats diversity uh we've already talked about bats diversity in the world Best diversity in Malaysia and specifically best diversity in Penang. Okay, uh, thank you, Dr. Ain. Uh, yeah. Okay, uh, as I mentioned earlier, I've seen bats coming out in millions in uh, deer cave in Mulu. Uh, and then if you uh, watch yeah. on TV, most of the time people in documentaries, uh, they show that bats live in caves, uh, in underground tunnel. And we sh I'm surely a lot of people have watched Batman movies, uh, so we have Bat Cave, right? So, do they just live in caves or they do live in other sites? Uh, do they have other sites, other roosting sites that they, they choose to live as well? Okay, uh, so thank you, uh, Dr. Tama, for that question that is related with uh, my uh, next slide. Actually, uh, talking about the bat roost, uh, before that, actually, bats we able to can be found um, in uh, various uh, habitat types, from forest, agriculture area, forest edge, uh, urban area, city, and so on. So it can be found anywhere, and it depends on their behavior, the ecology, and so on. Okay. So talking about the bat rules, they have a rules that just only. Uh, as a temporary or they use the rules as a permanent rules. Uh, there is also a uh, bad rules that uh, made from, not made, that they use the no, uh, natural structure as their rules and some of the bad species, they use the human-made structure for their rules. Okay, for temporary rules, uh, usually uh, um, it depends on the season. For example, uh, fruit eating bats. Sometimes they they um, have a temporary roost because that roost is near their food resource. And whenever the flowering season ends, so they not 
uh, roosting on that side anymore. They move to different roosts. So uh, that is an, uh, one example of temporary roost. The other example of temporary roost is um, uh, especially the bad species that use uh, vegetation or leaf uh, to as their roost. Because some of the leaves, they have a, a certain time of period and then whenever the leaf is already uh, matured and then uh, dry and then not uh, suitable enough to be as a roost for the bats, so they will move to the, the other types of uh, roost. Okay. So I will show you after this the uh, different types of roots uh, that can be found. So this is an example of roots site. Uh, the beds that uh, colonize uh, the main med building. So this is the, the like a, this is we can simply say that a small colony of beds that roost on the attic on the roof of the, the building. So this is also another example, small colony of bats uh, that roost in the building. So this is example for permanent uh, roost. Okay, so cave. And then this one is actually the very big colony size of uh, the bats. It looks like a map, but it's actually not map. So this is the close up. Okay. So they will hang on the surface of the cave like this. And if you notice for this photo, on the right side, this is a, like a small size bed, like a different coloration, like a uh, what grayish, pinkish color, gray, pinkish color. Okay, so this is uh, the pup, I mean, not pup, the, the young bats. And usually we able to see this kind of uh, condition in a cave, uh, what we call it as a cave that we call as um, maternal cave. Because uh, some of the bats, they use a certain uh, part in the cave as their uh, place to rear the young. So whenever the young already reach adult stage, they move to different uh, part of the cave. Okay. All right. Um, so trees. So this is a flying fox. They use tree for their roost area, for roosting site. Uh, this is what I mentioned before. Uh, the bats that use um, leaf. Okay. The the leaf that can fall. This, this is, uh, for example, like a banana leaf. So they will stay here like in small colony. Maybe less than um, five, maybe ten to five individuals. It depends on the size of the leaf. Uh, whenever the leaf is uh, mature enough, so they already the leaf already expand. So the bats will find another uh, foliage, another uh, curl leaf to to stay in. Okay, all right. So this is another example. Uh, this kind of uh, uh, species, uh, this is not in Malaysia, this is uh, somewhere in Costa Rica. So the same thing, uh, they, they uh, simply hang on the mid part of the leaf. This is a species from, uh, I think from banana group, but not from Musa, I think from, I'm not remember, I'm not sure about this, but uh, the leaf is look like a banana, banana leaf as well, but this is a small. Okay, all right. So there's also bats that use a pitcher plant as their roosting site. And of course, this is for only one individual, or not more. Uh, this is an example for the bats that use uh, three holes as their roost. So this is uh, the bamboo, holes in bamboo. So the bats will go inside of the uh, crevices or the holes uh, in the bamboo. So if you look at here properly, actually the bats have a flat, uh, they have a different structure for the heads. So they have a flattened uh, structure for the head so that they can sleep inside of the uh, bamboo, uh, what, sleep, bamboo hole. 
Okay. And then they have a special uh, pad on their, on their, this side. How do I say it? The palm, not the palm. This one. Okay, here. To make sure that they can attach on the surface of uh, uh, the, the, the bamboo, inside of the bamboo. So this is uh, the close-up photo. The, the things that I uh, put in circle, the yellow circle, is uh, showing the disc that can be uh, attached on the surface of the bamboo, inside of the bamboo, so that they not slip. All right, so this is another example for roosting site for bats. Uh, they use uh, three holes. Some can just simply use this hole to stay inside. Uh, some of the bat species use the uh, fallen tree and they roost inside of this one. And then this is an example, the close up. And uh, this is not three holes, but this is the end nest. Yeah. Okay. So okay. basically, uh, the roosting side for bats is various types. I mean, like so many. Every, everywhere. Everywhere. And then you it's also mentioned that they can also. They can also yeah. be, be found roosting at human human made area human made sites, right? Hum, yes. Human, human and, made sites. and also it depends on the, the the microclimate inside of the the nest itself. Actually, they're not just simply uh, go and then just hang hang hanging there to make sure that they're able to uh, use that as a, their roost site. But they need to match with a uh, certain types of microclimate that. Uh, enable them to stay longer. Okay, thanks. Uh, okay, I have another question. Uh, mm -hmm. You mentioned about the the the, the breeding just now. Uh, okay. Do they have a certain breeding season, or they wait for musim durian, or after musim durian to breed, or to reproduce? Do they have something like that? Uh, the time. Okay. Uh, about bats reproduction, um, for tropical bats, uh, compared to temp this, this one, uh, tropical bats, usually, uh, in general, we're saying that bats don't have any um, uh, breeding season, in general. But if we look by species, uh, by group, it's either uh, fruit bats or insects bats, some of the species showing uh, the pattern, the breeding pattern. Okay? For example, the uh, fruit bats, of course, they, they need to follow uh, the, the time for flowering season because they can get more food and then uh, more food is indicates more energy so that they're able to invest some energy for reproduction. So that is for the fruit bats. For insects eating bats, it depends on the species. And also, it depends on where they roost. It's either they roost in the forest and they forage in the forest, or they roost a little bit far from forest and they forage somewhere in the forest. So it depends on their, or what we can call it as a, their ener energetic demands during that time period. Okay. Um, Okay, so this is about the reproduction, uh, the length of pregnancy between three to four weeks, just like one month, okay, less than one month. And then uh, the female bats, female individual, uh, delivered on the single pup per year, but there is also occasion that they produce twin, but that is a rare occasion. I mean, same like, like human, we also sometimes we got twins, right? So same with the bats. But uh, it's uh, rarely seen, usually single pup per year. So if, let's say, they miss, especially for the bats that have a breeding season, if they miss their uh, breeding season for this year, they need to wait for the following year to produce new offspring. 
So this is one of the reason why uh, the bats population can easily uh, affected uh, by so many destruction because they, they produce uh, just only one young per year. So so they, if they miss this time of period, they need to wait for uh, another year to produce, to reproduce. Okay, so talking about the uh, breeding season just now uh, for tropical bats, uh, for those who have breeding season, they will synchronize their uh, lactation period with the food. Okay, it's either fruit, let's say for example, for the fruit eating bats, they will uh, synchronize with the flowering season. For insects eating bats, will they will uh, synchronize with the uh, maximum or the highest abundance of uh, insects during that time of period. And this is indirectly related with the rainfall. Okay, so rainfall uh, actually uh, play or uh, influence the availability of the food. Okay, uh, related with the insects life cycle, related with uh, the uh, phenology of the tree itself. Okay, so this is uh, can be uh, observed with uh, the, the bat species that have a breeding season. And however, there is also bats that don't have any breeding season. They just uh, simply uh, produce, but not like uh, frequent as uh, rats because rats is just like uh, they keep on producing after they give birth uh, for a certain period and then they give birth again, again and again for like for one year they have uh, so many uh, what what do you call it uh, ah right now I forget the the, the terms but uh, for the bats. They, uh, so far that I found, um, they can uh, produce more than uh, one uh, single part per year. Let's say like uh, two breeding period, breeding season. is either they breed uh, twice per year, meaning that let's say early of the year and end of the year. Or they have two peak of breeding season but they choose is either the first uh, breeding period or the second breeding period it depends so it depends on the species itself uh, about the lifespan uh, there is a documented uh, information about uh, the age for the bats uh, 10 to 30 years and the oldest wild bats is about 38 years but from my experience during uh, in my during my study I uh, capture uh, the bats that firstly uh, tag, uh, they, they put a certain uh, marking on the bats, the bats wing, uh, seven years before I start my, my study. So during that time, when I look back, uh, during that time, uh, there is a female individual, uh, adult. So after seven years, I caught it again. Mm. Uh, the female bat is also in adult uh, stage uh, and then we can simply estimate maybe at least they already uh, produce uh, seven individuals so far since the first capture. So by having uh, that time, uh, we can estimate uh, the, the how old the bat is. This. That is just like a rough estimation. Okay, okay. Thank, thank you, Dr. Ayn. Uh, yes. Uh, in the beginning, uh, when I read your your biodata, say that your expertise is, is also into the ecosystem services provided by bats. Mm. Uh, can you briefly uh, share with us the uh, yeah the importance, all the services that these bats are doing for us for free? Okay, yeah, of course for free, and that way we can get benefit from them. Okay, um, I'm going to move to the next slide. So, basically, uh, this is the importance of bats and also the importance of bats conservation. Uh, it's about the ecosystem services. Uh, we know that um, bats become a good uh, agent or pollinator agents, uh, seed dispersal agents, insect pest controller, and uh, from their dropping, their guano, uh, uh, they allow the, the efficiencies of uh, nutrient cycles. Uh, the other thing is they contribute to uh, new knowledge. Uh, for example, like in sound engineering, we learn about the ecolocation and we can try to apply it for 
uh, other things. Let's say, for example, the drone design, the submarine, uh, air traffic control, and so on. Okay, that is for examples. Uh, the other thing is we can also get the benefit from uh, discovery from medical research. And of course, now we uh, alert about the emerging disease. So there is a bunch of uh, 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 several best researchers that are working on this kind of uh, research. Uh, they're studying about the defense system, immune tolerance uh, in bats, on how they able to protect themselves uh, from being infected for certain types of disease. Okay, and then there is also study uh, related to on how bats can uh, live longer uh, compared to uh, other types of vertebrates. Okay. But for, for today's talk, uh, for this uh, session, I would like to highlight more about the ecosystem services. Okay, which is the same thing. Uh, nectar uh, drinking bats as a pollinator, fruit eating bats as a seed disperser, insects divorous bats as a insect pest suppressor, or they can control the insects population uh, in surrounding, in our surrounding. So this is only like a photo showing you uh, different types of uh, roles that play by the bats. Okay, so the same thing. I know that not everybody likes to eat petai, the Pakia speciosa, but for those who really love to eat petai, so this is your invisible hero. Okay, so this is the unique tree spilia. Um, and of course, here, who's not like durian? So most of Malaysian like durian. So this is a very good a study uh, by, I think, by my friend, Dr. Shima, showing that uh, the flying fox also play roles uh, in durian pollination. And this, uh, uh, the banana, and if you look at the white things on the face, it's actually the, the pollen from the uh, banana flower. So this is on how they help uh, the, the pollination uh, process happen. And then we can get the benefit from them. Okay, so the other thing is uh, bats also uh, become a pollinator for mangrove tree. Okay. So, uh, and this, this one, we can uh, simply say that uh, bats also indirectly contribute to make sure the stable ecosystem of mangrove system. And we know that mangrove ecosystem, they, we can also get the food from uh, mangrove area. Uh, mangrove itself, able to protect uh, the surrounding area, surrounding habitats from the storm or from the big wave. And some of the area use uh, this kind of uh, location, this kind of habitats as an ecotourism so that it will uh, help the local uh, people economy in terms of economic uh, value. All right. So uh, for mangrove, we also notice that uh, mangrove also become a foraging area and roosting site or nesting site for other types of animals, for example, the reptiles, the migratory birds, and so on. So uh, this is what we uh, learn from uh, our study in Penang Botanical Garden. Okay. So without uh, whether you realize it or not, Penang Botanical Garden is actually a very good uh, area. Uh, you know that this one is good for the recreational area, the outdoor activities for, I mean, like for pinning eyes. But uh, the other thing is at night, they also, uh, the bats also uh, play their roles to pollinate certain groups of tree. It's not only tree in Penang Botanical Garden, but tree everywhere. It's just only like we captured the bats in the Penang Botanical Garden. So uh, we document here, we able to um, identify the pollens that uh, collected on the body part of the species, the fruit bat species. 
from lesser short nose, uh, greater short nose, hospital uh, fruit bats, and also from lesser down bats. So for here, for these three species, we able to uh, find, we able to detect the pollen of banana, uh, the petai, and also the guava on their body. Meanwhile, for the lesser down, uh, down bats, we uh, found the pollen of a uh, mangrove tree, the what we call it as a, a mangrove, uh, what, uh, the berembang. Berembang. Berembang, yeah, yeah. Okay. And then the pollen of uh, kekabu, since, um, yeah, kekabu. Uh, and then uh, guava again, uh, the Indian trumpet, and also the durian. So that is uh, the roles of Penangs that we caught in the Penang Botanical Garden, the pollinating bats uh, in Penang Botanical Garden. Uh, meanwhile, for insects eating bats, we also recorded uh, more information. So this is only the, the four uh, dominant species that can be found in this area, in Penang uh, Botanical Garden and also the Youth Park area. From the analysis, uh, because we, we collect the fecal samples and we uh, analyze the fragment, the insect fragment that can be found in their dropping, in their fecal samples. So we found the beetles, uh, the bats also eat the moth, eat the wasp, flies, a uh, group of mosquitoes, leaf hoppers. This is a group from uh, cicada, but just a small, small size of cicadas. Group, same group with cicada, but not like cicadas species. Okay, so basically this is, uh, in general, we know that uh, bats play important roles in ecosystem. And specifically in Penang, the bats also play their roles. It's either we realize it or not. Okay, talking about people realizing or not. Yes. Uh, we know, you've mentioned that there are a lot of functions to play. But then there's, there's people, do people know? about it are people aware about this do they know that oh bats are important uh from your research that from the research that, that you have done do you think that people have the awareness about the importance of bats uh, short one short answer uh we're running out of time um, actually okay short answer uh not many people realize this kind of uh, rules that is short answer Uh, is, is that because of the influence from the, the belief from TV and all? Yeah, part of it. So I'm um, going to move to the next slide uh, related with uh, that kind of condition. So before we look at the awareness uh, uh, among people, among public, uh, especially in Penang. So this is uh, the threat uh, for the bats population. Okay, if you just ignore the symbol, the bat symbols in the middle of this uh, pie chart, okay, so habitat loss, direct hunting, illegal wildlife trade, disease, this is also uh, the threat for other types of wildlife. But for bats, it's also the same thing. They, most of the bats is actually uh, negatively affected uh, by human activities. This is just only for example. Some uh, I mean, like majority about the habitat loss, and of course, it's related with the roost disturbance. And then the rest about the hunting, uh, about the illegal wildlife trade, and also uh, the risk of uh, disease. Because uh, some of the uh, bat species also suffering, uh, I mean, being infected of certain types of disease. All right. So, uh, I'm sharing you uh, this, uh, this uh, very good... Um, information from uh, Rimba showing you uh, about the cultural belief of uh, around uh, Asia Pacific uh, area. Um, actually, when we look at this kind of poster, um, in Southeast Asia especially, we uh, have a positive, um, how do I say, positive uh, belief. Uh, saying that um, bats uh, being as a, some inspirational or symbol of a, the lucky symbol 
and some of the ethnic group use uh, the bats characteristic uh, and merge and mix with their own culture for example uh, the dance uh, this one uh, the dance uh, this is an example for zapin dance and then this is a tattoo from uh, what they call it as a what sembawa tattoo i think uh, from Sarawak. Uh, from Sarawak. Iban. Sarawak, Iban. right? Okay. Um, so let me uh, zoom in a little bit. Uh, just focus on uh, Malaysia itself. So, and the blue circle that I put it here. So, actually, we mix uh, the characteristic, uh, the spirits, or the behavior of the bats into our own culture. Meaning that we don't see any negative um, perception on bats or even in uh, flying fox. Okay, we, 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 we blend it together. Unfortunately, uh, we being influenced uh, by Western culture, which is uh, bias against bats. They, uh, of course, like what you said before about the vampire, about the uh, scary things, uh, they relate with the Halloween, they relate with all uh, negative spirits, uh, the ghosts and so on. So, uh, know that we are influenced by that kind of um, uh, impression, the perception. And that is where uh, we found that uh, the awareness and also the perception of penangites uh, on beds is not uh, like a really in a good condition, I can say. So from five, uh, around 500 uh, respondents that we survey, there's only one third of them know general information about bats. General information is, uh, I'm referring to, let's say, uh, ability to differentiate between um, uh, what, a flying fox and also uh, the other types of bats. And uh, whether they realize, whether they know about the bats contribution or to human or to other living things. And uh, I can simply say that uh, this one, the 66% is resem uh, indicate that two thirds of uh, respondents uh, not really sure or not, not do not know about bats. Okay. Uh, yeah, this is, this is the condition. And then when we ask about their perception, Majority of them saying that bats bring luck, bring uh, bad luck for them. Okay, so bear in mind, uh, this survey is conducted before uh, the pandemic COVID-19. All right. So with this miskind, uh, this um, this condition, the misunderstanding about bats, and then come with the <laughs> COVID uh, issues. So I believe that uh, people are getting more nervous and uh, maybe the perception uh, keep on increase. I mean, like about the bad perception on bats. So this is why um, we uh, need to enhance the effort to uh, make sure that we deliver uh, uh, the right information about bats so that people not misunderstanding about them by uh, appreciate appreciate whatever uh, the roles that they play even we 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 didn't realize uh, about it okay okay thank you yeah so that's actually really a lot 80 percent who yeah 80 percent of the 500 respondents think mm. that bats bring bad luck that's very contradict of our belief uh, yes uh, bats uh, design in in songket, right? Uh, in tattoo, mm. and also in uh, the zapin zapin dance. Okay, yeah. so I just would like you to share. We're coming uh, towards the end, the last ten to fifteen minutes of the session today. Okay. okay. How can we help protecting bats? Oh, okay. Very good question. It's related with uh, my next slide. Um. So this is on how we can protect the bats. It's either me, you, and all of us. Okay. First, we I put it here. Some of the organization that related with the uh, bats awareness, bats conservation activities. 
uh, is either local or international organization, please uh, join and support, uh, support us. Okay. And the other um, steps or the other things that you can do is not support the illegal wildlife trade. Seems like in Malaysia, not like really seeing this kind of condition with bats. But let's say uh, after some period, we're able to travel outside. There is also a certain area that is uh, selling the bad souvenir. So make sure that you not support this kind of uh, illegal trade. Okay. So the other thing is, um, uh, I also receive uh, some, not some, most of uh, people uh, saying about the bats that uh, rules in their house, uh, in their building, in their attic. And then they ask me uh, how to kill the bats. And my advice, not just simply uh, killing the bats, not just simply kill the bats, but we can provide uh, alternative rules for them, maybe by installing the bat house. And of course, it takes time because we, we uh, try to manipulate the bats' behavior. So it's not just simply like a move from uh, A side to B side. No, it takes time, maybe like a few weeks or a few months to make sure that they able to move or uh, to the new roosting site okay um uh, the, the bat house is actually uh new in malaysia uh this is already being practiced in uh in in uh, outside of malaysia especially in us in, in in europe they have this kind of uh alternative bed rules so that uh the what we call it uh can uh, stay in harmony with uh, bats uh, sharing the same space but not like in closer distance. Uh, the other thing is you can do is uh, do not prevent bats from uh, visiting the flower flowering trees because they 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 do the service for us. They help the flowering trees to provide fruit for us. Fruit means that food so that we can eat. Okay, so there is a, a simple um steps that we can do to to protect the bats together so so, Dr. Ayn, so if yes. we find uh bats sleeping in our balcony should we be afraid of that afraid in terms of what 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 kind of uh, yeah, disease, what? Uh, disease okay because uh, that, 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 that's come to my next question as uh last since last year people have been relating some people have been saying that uh covid 19 uh came from bats so yeah. a lot of people uh, i don't know about malaysia but then there are cases in australia and also in south america that people started to kill bats so yeah. is it true or has it been proven that covid 19 actually came from bats okay um uh... That is also one of the famous questions that being asked, not only to me, but being asked for my other clique. So currently, we still don't know yet. So there is no uh, significant report or discovery saying that, okay, bats bring COVID-19 virus. This, only, uh, this is also related with other types of wildlife. Uh, if you can recall a few months back, it's not only bats, uh, pangolin, snakes, and other types of wildlife related with uh, uh, the COVID-19 um, uh, issues right now. But the thing is, science, since um, the scientists still try to find uh, uh, the, the first resource that caused by uh, the, the, that caused uh, this kind of uh, condition to happen. And of course, we know about the zoonotic uh, spillover and so on, but there is no concrete uh, proof saying that bats or other types of wildlife uh, start this kind of uh, start to infect uh, the other the other wildlife or other other peoples. Uh, you know what I mean, right? Um, the latest information that uh, I've read uh, some uh, 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 the from there's a group of researchers that visit visited uh, china uh, recently uh, and then from their survey they think that uh, it's not starting from wuhan 
but we still don't know yet. And then they say that maybe come from uh, frozen food that from somewhere else. So now still uh, don't know yet. And then all the scientists uh, keep on working around the clock to find uh, the real situation, whether the bats or the wildlife or other kind of information, uh, other, other kind of uh, uh, factors uh, that involve in uh, COVID-19 uh, pandemic issues. Okay. 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 Thank you, uh, Dr. Ain. Uh, yes. Before we go into Q&A, is there yes. any, uh, I give you one minute uh, to just to share your last remarks uh, before we go to Q&A. Uh, okay, my last remark. Okay, so the same thing, if you want to love the bats, you need to know more about bats. Okay. Uh, if you're getting to know more details, more about bats, you uh, know uh, about their contribution to the ecosystem, you start to appreciate the, the occurrence of bats around us. Okay, you know, just not like, um, uh, it's not like a force, but uh, try to understand uh, the real situation. Why uh, this kind of uh, animals behave like this? Why this kind of animals are doing uh, this kind of uh, behavior? What is their um contribution to us or even not to us for other types of living things okay uh i think uh, that's all uh, and this one i just want to uh say thank you for all uh, uh agencies parties and organizations that re uh, contribute to our research especially for from uh, Penang itself, Penang State Government, Perhutanan, Pilitan, Penang Hill Habitats, uh, Friends of Penang Botanical Garden, uh, several funders, and also thank you for uh, Bad Psychology and uh, Lab Conservation Lab members in uh, USM for contributing all this kind of information so that we can share our finding to public. Okay, that's that's all from me. Okay, uh, thanks, uh, Dr. Ain, for the very informative talk. Okay, now let's see. Okay, should we have? Uh, should we have? Okay, I want to have the. I want to have a quiz now. Okay, oh, okay. remember the quiz, the quiz that you did earlier. Uh, let's have the quiz now. Uh, so please go to kahoot.it uh, if you've done it earlier uh, in the beginning no problem just do it again we just want to see whether this program has increased your knowledge uh, with regards to bats okay so please uh, open a new tab go to kahoot.it and key in the pin number Okay, and then, okay, so now please be quick. We only have 12 seconds for each question. So when, uh, so just make it quick uh, and answer this, answer the question. Those will be the same questions. Okay, please go into Kahoot, open a new tab. Okay, open a new tab and, and pin in the number. The number is 4384734. Okay, come in, come in, quickly, come in. Okay, cepat, cepat, masuk. Okay. Let's wait until we have 30. Just now we had 30 earlier. Please come in. Okay. While you're answering that, I just want to look through in the...
questions that we have had. Okay. We have a, uh, have quite a few questions to answer. Okay. Uh, okay. Questions are on. Okay. Please answer those questions. Everybody. Okay, good. Okay, how many bat species are there in the world? Okay, while while we're looking at while while some people are doing the the questions on on Kahoot, maybe we can start answering some of the questions. Uh, yeah, behind. yeah, sure. yes. Okay, okay. Let's look at the the first question. Let me see. Okay, A question from Pui Yan. Dr. Ain, I wonder how the bats can know their members via echo sound. Do all species of bats share the same frequency or language when they communicate? Oh, this is a very good question. <laughs> yeah, um, the bats actually uh, uh, have a unique uh, frequency call. So they're able to communicate uh, between the same individuals the same sorry the same uh, species or different species okay uh same like us like human we have our own uh let's say uh our language right we can speak malay we can speak chinese in uh tamils and we have a uh, dialect as well people from southern people from uh, eastern part or even from sabah sarawak we have our own dialect so the same thing with the bat okay so each species of bats, uh, the I'm um, I'm talking about the uh, insects eating bats that produce uh, the sound. So uh, some species have a certain range of um, a call frequency we call it. So the other species have a different uh, call frequency. But even though they have a different uh, call frequency, they are able to communicate uh, because um, there is also um, uh, research showing that uh, uh, the bats. Uh, compete uh, for the food okay it's about the food competition and some of the bat just simply grab uh, the other group of bats food so if you able to i mean if you have time later on you can uh, try to search in the youtube there is a lot of a uh, uh, video short video uh, talking about this uh, the food competition uh, bit, uh, among uh, echolocating bats so they have a certain uh, sound and they can uh, interrupt the wavelength of certain uh, bats group so that they can interject and then eat the 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 prey uh, so yeah so to answer your question yes they have a different wavelength different uh, uh echolocation call they still can communicate either between species or within uh, the same species all right okay thank you for okay. a very good question <laughs> okay thanks okay uh they're coming up to the final two questions i think now it's already in the last question okay, okay. let's see the last question there are vampire bats in malaysia okay earlier some people answered yes there are vampire bats in malaysia so now what do you think after listening to dr einstock do you think that there are vampire bats in malaysia true or false there are vampire bats in malaysia Okay, so congratulations to those who have answered uh, correctly. Okay, Arti, Izati, and also Missy, uh, please uh, share your contact with Amir. Amir will be sharing his email. Uh, we have uh, Mister, we have some prizes for you. Okay, uh, so please, uh, Amir, please put on your email there. And then Missy, Izati, and Arti, 
please email Ame so that we can have your address and also your your other details so that you can send to you the prizes. Okay. Thank you for that. Okay, I'll go to the next question uh, from Casey Ng. Dr. Okay. Nurul, is there any functional application for bat taxonomy? For example, in fish taxonomy discipline, the taxon is used for bio-indicating water quality and hydrology complexity. Well, it's a hard question. Okay, or, or, uh, can, or, can, you, can okay. you repeat the, the question again okay. about the taxonomy? The uh, it's written, uh, it's on StreamYard now. So, is there any functional application for bat taxonomy? For example, in fish taxonomy discipline, the taxon is used for bio-indicating water quality and hydrology complexity. I think maybe Casey will need to email Dr. Ayn for this. <laughs> yeah. Uh, it, it, it will be a very long answer. Yes. Yes. Um, so... Hmm. You want to answer this now or you can ask Casey to email you? Um, yeah, maybe uh, we can, uh, I can explain later on because I also not in like a taxonomic uh, expertise and related with all kind of molecular things. But generally, uh, we, we can uh, apply some of information that we can get from the bats. It's either uh, from the molecular information itself or from uh, their behavior itself. We, we we able to try to apply in our uh, other types of uh, condition but for specific uh, that related with the what the the functional application i'm i'm not really sure on how to answer it yeah i will get get back to you later on okay i will get uh, more information on that and then uh, we can share it uh, i can share it uh, with all of you later on Okay, okay, no problem. Okay, yeah, next yeah. question is from Munira Azman. Dr. Ain, is there any species of bats that specialize in mangrove habitat? Oh, uh, thank you for the questions. Uh, yes, uh, we, even the local name also related with the uh, mangrove bats. We have a macroglossus minimus, we have a macroglossus sobrinus that uh, can easily be found in the mangrove area. Uh, some, uh, let's say in Penang, uh, we recorded the macroglossus, uh, sobrinus in, uh, Pantai Aceh, in, in, uh, the area, in Balik Pulau area. Yeah. There is a, a, a straight of, uh, mangrove area there, right? So we, we've, uh, captured that kind of species over there as well. Okay. And, um, uh, yes. Okay. And then... Uh, there's another question from Yok Mui Liu. Are bats negatively impacted by significant noise and light pollution, especially in large cities and other urban areas? Oh, okay. Uh, this is also a good uh, question as well uh, because it's related with the bat behavior and also on how bats respond to the uh, artificial light, uh, the light. Uh, it's like a, not like really direct uh, uh, impact, but uh, we think about the light that affected, uh, that attracted certain uh, insects. Okay, so certain insects they attracted on certain wavelength for the light. So there is also a pro and cons about using the LED, uh, different types of light, and so on. So um, in general, there have uh, been reported about the effects of using uh, light. I mean, like light in the city, especially. Uh, but bats also have some kind of adaptation, some uh, some of mechanism to to make sure that they still able to survive on 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 the city. And of course, if we compare with the bats in the forest, it's totally different. Um, they have a uh, specialized on certain things. Okay. Um, what else? Um. So basically, uh, there's a condition that where uh, the bats able to fly and forage in the near nearest uh, forest edge. Sometimes they just not focus on the city. Sometimes they just go to the nearest uh, forest edge to get the food. Some of them still uh, manage to uh, get the insects from the open space, meaning that the insects that able to 
uh, being captured in the open area. So uh, in terms of uh, ability for them to survive, it depends on the species. Usually for the open space bed, it should be no problem. Uh, I hope that I answered the question. Okay. Uh, thanks, Dr. Ain. Uh, we actually have a few more questions coming in, but uh, okay. I think we don't have time to, to answer all the questions. So what we'll do is we'll get the answers from Dr. Ain, and then we will post the answers later uh, via YouTube or via the Habitat Foundation's Facebook. Okay? So we'll answer yeah, them sure, sure. afterwards. Uh, okay. okay. So that's all. We've come to the end of, of our session today. Thank you very much, Dr. Ain. Thank you very much to our viewers out there. Thank you very much. Thank you for being very supportive, being very active in asking your questions. I'm sorry that we can't answer all your questions with the interest of time. However, as I mentioned earlier, we'll get Dr. Ain to, to share her answers later, uh, maybe within this week. Okay, we try. Boleh, Ain? Within this week, boleh yes, lakot. Yes, sure. Okay. Yeah. No problem. Uh, okay. Okay. Once again, terima kasih banyak-banyak. Thanks to all. Okay. Good night. Thank you so much. Bye-bye. <laughs> oh, love that. Oh. <laughs> okay. Thank, love that. Thank you. Bye-bye. Macam ni, tangan bags. Okay, bye. bye. Thanks. Bye.